I would actually say knowing the difference between a for-profit and a non-profit, and I would always say, okay, what is your vision and your mission for your nonprofit? And when they share that information, I can help them to better distinguish whether what they need to be doing is in fact a nonprofit or a for-profit. In terms of individuals going out and doing nonprofit activities in the name of the nonprofit where they have not done any registration with the Virginia SCC, they haven't filed their 501c3 paperwork and gotten their certificate, but they're out there fundraising, telling people that they're a nonprofit, that their taxes will be, you know, their um, donations will be written off on their taxes and that's not the case because they're not an official nonprofit yet because they haven't even filed any of the paperwork. So I would say that's one of the most common issues that I see right in the beginning. It just goes back. It's in my nature. It's ingrained in me and who I am. Um, I started out in middle school with uh, winning parliamentary law competitions, um, serving on the student council um, in high school, um, in competitions, debate competitions. And this didn't even come to my vernacular until another situation happened. And then I was like, well, where did the, all this come from? But for me, all of my career, I've been in a grant position. Every position I've ever had, um, from working in the school system, the housing authority, the city, they were all one in one thing a profit, be it uh, private or public. So my positions were always grant positions. So in those positions, I always had to um, assist in writing grants. So from that perspective, I learned what it takes to be a nonprofit. And that's what mostly helped me. And we're talking about uh, the greater of about 22 years. Well, I would say most people refer to me as someone that really enjoys paperwork, which is so true, and organization. You know, um, I've had the opportunity to work with standard nonprofits, you know, those that are very popular in the media, also grassroots nonprofits no matter what level they are at, if their system is not organized and their documentation is not filed on time, they end up losing a lot of money and that can end up in nonprofits not being able to continue, which affects the community. So my whole, you know, spin and specialty in this is paperwork, but also the passion because I understand the connection. And I don't mind talking about it. I don't mind talking people through the process so that they can learn how to do it themselves. Yes, you can always get somebody else to do it. Even if you do, you still need to know the process. So that's why the training part is important. And that's why I feel like I'm the person for what we're doing with NP90B. And this is something that I have always endeavored to do. Um, Some things happened in my life that prohibited me from moving forward in this vein. And once I found some like-minded people who have common similarities, um, who love paperwork, I love paperwork, have always loved paperwork, to the point where my mom used to tell me, don't bring no more paperwork home. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And and in elementary school, real, real true story. But I love organization. Um, I like seeing people thrive. I like to inform people. Um, my son gave me the name um, Resource Mobilizer. And mm. I just, I, mm. I, I love um, the community. I love people. Um, and I don't always have to be up front. I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. And I want people to have that full knowledge um, so that they can be effective. And that's what mm-hmm. 90 days to becoming an effective nonprofit means to me is that these nonprofits will be effective. I love to see nonprofits that once they've gotten their paperwork in place, even to the point whether they need my services anymore after that, I just love to see them thrive out in the community. I love to see mm-hmm. their name on the grant list. 
it, it just warms my heart because my philosophy is I'd rather teach you how to fish than to give you a fish. And this to me is what we're about to do. When it comes to the fact that we want to deliberately train those who are coming up next, our kids watching us do this work is the translation that happens. Whether he's a part of it now or not, you know it, it's bled into him already because he knows what his mother's doing. Yeah. You know? All three of my children have their own nonprofits. Ah, beautiful. And I love it. Say no I more. Love Say it. no more. I love that this is not a joke. Having a nonprofit is not a social club. This is real business because you have individuals that really depend on your services to be able to get back on their feet oftentimes or to educate, you know, an enlightened mind. So this is serious. So if you're coming to the training, be ready to learn and be engaged, be ready to network. You don't necessarily have to tell your business, but you can definitely pass along your name, your email to other people, pass out your business cards. It's very important that you take this seriously though. It's a commitment. It's not a situation where you should jump in for a year or two and be like, peace. Now this is a commitment because you're investing in communities and neighborhoods and businesses. Yes. So I will say those things. All right.